Hey guys, it's Alan Be Equestrian, and today we are going to be talking about the most popular documentary on earth at the moment Tiger King. Toast to the ones that we lost on the way, cause the drinks bring back all the memories, and the memories bring back memories, bring back you. some questions I'm gonna answer and give my opinion on the whole thing they basically were talking about through the documentary so if anybody gets offended I'm not doing it on purpose this is just my opinion and his opinion mm -hmm. on everything so so the first question I thought about was what's our thoughts on Joe Exotic? I think that Joe Exotic is an amazing person <laughs> I'm joking um, I think he's done a lot of wrong, a lot of wrong things, and that like we're very qu questionable. However, I think that he's not, he's not all bad. He's done some good, mm. and we can definitely say more bad than good. Oh, but yeah. he has done some good stuff. If you have watched his most like the most recent uploaded video onto Netflix, then mm. you will understand where we're coming from. But the, he he's done a lot more questionable stuff. That. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I, I definitely think that they've they portrayed him as a lot, a lot of a, like worse character than he actually is. And I think mm. yeah. that most of the things that they've talked about, they've definitely exaggerated a lot of it. So the next one was, do we think that Joe abused his animals? So this one, I could say that yeah. Because obviously he has killed five tigers, and even though some may say they need to be put down, no. I think they did. Well, I like they said it because it's so like there's a lot of what's the word? Controversy. Yeah, like the one minute one person says like they're really healthy tigers and Joe put them down just mm -hmm. literally for the sake of it. Next one they say that they did have an injury or something like that. So I I believe the the people that said that he had, the tigers had injuries because you can see that he definitely loved those tigers and that he definitely put a lot of energy and a lot into them like mm -hmm. if you watch the louis Fury documentary you'll see that in 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 that like almost the whole documentary like all of the parts that he was in you could just see that he was like invested in into the tigers mm -hmm. and that he really loved them so i don't think he would have just killed them like if he'd probably only kill them if he had to, if he really had to. So, like you talked about with the Louis Thoreau um, documentary episode on his thing. So basically, back in 2012, Louis Thoreau went to go and see Joe's park, and there's a lot of like questionable stuff. If you watched that before, you watched Tiger King. Mm -hmm. Like the way he was talking about them and stuff like that. He in there you could tell that he did. <laughs> Anyways, in there you could tell that he did love his tigers, love with his animals and stuff like that. But at the same time, he did say a lot of questionable stuff that would make people feel very, very mm. uncomfortable. True. Like he did say about um he would shoot the people before the tigers mm -hmm. which in the same way i do see where he's coming from like obviously if you're getting attacked by that then I'm not gonna lie you don't have much no yeah uh, what's the word thing is if you fight back then you're more likely to die yes but then at the same time i do see where like you could kill the tiger and then stuff like that but it's he's, a questionable yeah. one he said that it'd be more humane to to kill the person than to let the tiger kill them the tiger could just keep playing with the, the guy, like playing with his food and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I, I see where he's coming from, but I also definitely disagree with what he said. But also on that most recent episode that got released, uh, who was it that talked about it? I can't remember. Can't remember, but the guy <laughs> did say about that lady who asked Joe to look after her horses and mm. stuff like that, or horse, and Joe said yeah, and when she left, he shot it. Mm -hmm. See, like, it's hard to tell what's the truth and what's not the truth, obviously, because everybody has their different opinions on it. But if it was the truth, then I find it very, very wrong. Disgusting how can you do that to someone. And 
and especially ha that the horse was not his. True. So it was just kind of like, just imagine if it was like he asked someone to look after one of his tigers, for example. They wouldn't just go ahead and shoot it. True. And then what made it worse is how he said that Joe then fed all the horse meat to the tigers. Mm. See, I, I don't entirely believe that story. No, nor do I, but... I, I, think, I feel like maybe whoever, I can't remember who it was on the documentary that said, that, that told that story. But I think that they probably were lying, and I, I don't think that anyone would have trusted him with horses, especially the fact that across the road to uh, GW Zoo was a, a horse park where they had like loads of horses. Yeah. So I don't think they, like, if, if I was to own a horse, I wouldn't give it to him who owned tigers, I'd probably give it to the person that owned the horses. So, basically, we could only think of one thing really mm. in this section to think about, but that was, do we really think Joe was upset by Travis's passing? Mm. This is more because if you look in the documentary, he then dated and married another guy in the same year of Travis's mm. death. Like, to be fair, you really would not do that, especially if, I think it was like a month or so. Mm -hmm. It was a month between, oh, well, if I'm correct, it was a month between the death of Travis and Joe marrying Dylan. Because literally, that's just wrong in many ways. Mm -hmm. And then also, you wouldn't, like, if you were grieving, you wouldn't then just go and marry another person. It's just horrible, especially the way that he kept just carrying on in the park the same way, even though some people did say that, oh, you could tell he was upset by his emotions and stuff like that. I just don't really believe it, really. <laughs> I, however, I think that he, he, my opinion is that he was really upset by it, and I reckon that... Well, he was crying about it. Yeah, I reckon that that he it hit him really, really hard. And I th I think that because in the documentary, in the, in, the, in the latest episode, he says that, that he, that Joe wasn't ever the same and that he changed that day and that everything was just going downhill and he didn't get counseling. However, he did get some, something, I can't remember what it was, but apparently it made him worse. And then I, I reckon that he, he married Dylan so then he could try and get over Travis faster. That's just my opinion. It's literally wrong in many ways. Like, even if he was to do it in an out way, mm. it's just you shouldn't just do that. Either get proper help mm -hmm. and get over it with help instead of sort of marrying just another person just to feel better. Mm -hmm. Right, after that talk, um, the next one is do we think. Joe should have 22 years in prison and is that good enough punishment really? I feel like maybe 22 years might be a little bit harsh because a lot of the a lot of the convictions I th well the main conviction I, I just would have been to talk about later on I, I don't think he did it um, however the animal abuse ones I think he did do so I reckon around about 10 years probably would have been enough and then obviously get rid of his license to ever own animals again. And to be fair, Joe was doing most of all of that stuff for fame, mm -hmm. but now he's got more fame. He's yeah, he's still, he's still getting money, but then it's not really, he's not really done it from himself. It's because of the documentary that they get money. Mm -hmm. Like 22 years is a lot and stuff, but in some way, like, like you said, basically it is a long time maybe cut it down but then to be fair he needs to learn from his lessons and his mistakes that he's made so i think i i personally just think that he'd, he'd learn from his mistakes after at least 10 years so i reckon if he got 10 years uh, that cuts it down by at least half and i think that i just don't definitely... agree with him having to die in prison no i don't especially as he's like 57 now so obviously him also being in prison is because of like Carol's set up or murder. Do we think Joe was set up or do we think that he wanted it? This, Joe did say that he didn't really do that. 
Like, he's joked about it and stuff like that, but he would never want to... Actually kill her. Yeah. I personally think he was. I think that, um... I just think it's a bit sketchy how... The, this guy turned up, took his zoo from him. His friend then was hired to kill a cow. Just, something doesn't add up there. And the fact that he was also to be able to convict <laughs> Hello. to be able to convict Joe they needed they needed proof that there was an exchange of money and then all of a sudden he got paid to do it whereas before he wasn't paid to do it don't even know <laughs> you don't even know fair enough I can't even answer that one this one is do we think Carol should be in prison 100% mm -hmm. she should be yeah She's just that kind of woman who's most likely done more bad than good. And she, to be honest, should be in prison more. Oh, 100%. I think that it's just... She's just not a good person, is she? What is our opinions on Carol's husband's death? In my opinion, it is real sketchy. But I really do feel like she would have done that. Because, mm -hmm. honestly, if he was still alive, and obviously in, maybe in a different country, people would at least recognise what he would look like. Because obviously yeah. when he were looking for him and stuff like that, obviously there would be posters up, stuff literally everywhere about it. Have you seen the sky? Mm -hmm. But no one found anything. And also, Carol did say some weird stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she said um, when when Joe got attacked by his lions, when they were like scratching around at his feet, she said that if she had a tiger go after someone, she would um, she would cover them in sardine oil. Like, like to be fair, how would you know what a tiger wants and what it wouldn't want unless you fed pretty someone much to a tiger? Done something like that. <laughs> Carol didn't even go to prison for that. Yeah, and also if you were a millionaire and you were trying to run away, surely you'd take out all of your money before you went and, and take it with it. you. Mm -hmm. Is she a hypocrite? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. 100% she's a hypocrite. Oh, like, she goes on all the time about how keeping big cats or exotic animals is bad, like keeping them in captivity, um, how breeding tigers is bad. She, she does that. The uh, next thing is talking about hers and Joe's park and in my opinion, they're pretty much alike. Mm -hmm. Or hers is even worse, to be fair, because she's got smaller cages than Joe, mm -hmm. and it's just not as nice. Like, in some of the um, shots, they said, like, how many animals? Like, over 100 tigers, yet they only seen, like, 12 of them? Yeah, they only like saw 12, but yet they had hundreds of them, and they just couldn't find them. Like, they, Joe went in a helicopter overhead and was looking for them, and he didn't spot a single other tiger other than the 12 that were in the cages that people were allowed to see. Which is very weird because if you have like a hundred tigers then obviously you'll be showing them. Yeah, exactly. And then people walk around the park and they like see all of them. Mm -hmm. How can money corrupt perception? Well, like, I think that Carol's wealth and her vast um popularity on YouTube and Facebook and stuff like that. I think that when she posts her stuff saying that Joe's bad or her park's amazing and then she goes on about how she's she loves animal rights and that she's all against keeping animals um, in captivity, I just think that the fact that she's got all of that money and all of the wealth, it, it, it corrupts the way people see her and the way people see Joe and all of the other exotic animal owners, I think that, like, when it, whenever somebody comes up and, and says, oh, you're just as bad or something negative towards her, she basically can just shut them, shut them out. So, we've got one more question that we're going to answer, yeah. and that is, do we think big cats should be held in captivity? 
So personally, I think they really shouldn't be, but for the first year or two of their lives, when they're like just growing up, starting to learn how to care for themselves, then maybe yes. But as long as they can spend the rest of their life out in the wild, hunting and doing the stuff that they want to do, mm -hmm. what they would do in the natural like habitat, really. Yeah. So that's my view on it. Is that yes, they should be. Let me out, all of you animal lovers. Um, it, it's very similar to what you said. I feel like because there's such a, a small number of um, tigers and stuff that are in the wild, there's only some 4,000, sorry, um, in, in the wild. And there's, in the wild, in the entire world. 20,000. And yet there's 20,000 in captivity in America alone. Adult tigers breed them. Um, in captivity, breed and breed and breed, and then once you have enough, you can then start breeding all of those together, and then release those cubs into the wild. So I'm gonna let Goose do the outro because obviously we're talking about cats. Mm -hmm. So yeah, don't do it. So I hope you've enjoyed Charlie's and Lucy's video about Jehovah Exalted. <laughs> so please put your likes, that pause up. And subscribe. Bye. Carol Baskin killed her husband, whacked him. Can't convince me that it didn't happen. Fed him to tigers, they snacking. What's happening? Carol Baskin. Woke up this morning with the sunshine.